Hey, hey, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Straight Up Show podcast. I am your host, joined by my co-host, Brandon and Lee. How are you guys doing today? Man, I'm super well. I am here and ready for this year to be over. Man. It's been forever since I've been on the show. Been yeah. Busy. I mean, yeah, it's been busy. And we're going to talk about why you've been so busy uh, later on the show. And Lee, uh, you kind of said, hey, it's been a crazy year. And uh, if you all been listening, this is our season two finale. Man, wow. This is crazy. We're, we're at season two now. I mean, we, we did it. Yeah. And, and you know, it's crazy, you know, is that we've done, and, we, and first off, before we go any further, I want to thank all of you out there who have been listening and supporting us. Uh, buying our merchandise, which we did this new this season, and uh, you've all actually bought a lot of our merchandise more than I expected. Uh, so thank you uh, for supporting. And just a quick plug, right quick, uh, you can go to straight up show about podcast dot com and get all your straight up merchandise because we want you to join the conversation. Uh, so that's one of the biggest things that's happened this year. Uh, like Lee, like you said, man, it's been a crazy year. Yeah, man. Like uh, it's it's been a year of 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 ups and big big downs. I think I think the downs may have been a, bl- a little bigger this year, but it is what it is. I mean, I mean, just to I guess kind of start getting into it. We got the whole you know pandemic thing still going, still going strong. Yay, Corona. Uh, that that was a joke, guys. I'm I'm not actually sharing for the coronavirus. Uh, but yeah, the you know the lockdown hit everyone pretty hard. But I know for me in particular, it's given me a little more time to to focus on other projects and stuff like Straight Up, for instance. Um, and this show has kind of gotten me through the year. It's been a real nice thing to have this creative outlet. Um. Uh, to be able to, I mean, even just to come together with y'all and just kind of air our grievances about what's going on in the world, uh, about how it's affecting our health. Um, It's definitely affected my mental health. Uh, But like I said, this this show uh, is keeping me going. I I love working on it. Um, And I love you guys. Oh, I love you too, buddy. Yeah, I love you too, Lee. Oh, I'm about to start crying. <laughs> Can we take a break, Rick? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 and I, I share those same sentiments with you, Lee, man. Like, uh, it's been great working with you guys, and I think our bond has become a little stronger, you know, and we can uh, – I mean, uh, if you all have, don't know behind the scenes, Lee has pretty much produced uh, most of this season, you know, and he's done a phenomenal job. Uh, he is – creative and brandon you know brandon was a brainchild about the whole, by this whole podcast i mean kudos to you guys for uh sticking with me in the long run and doing the hard work that you all do so uh, that's greatly appreciated so um we don't want to take this year as a negative note but some things like lisa has uh been the forefront of negativity throughout this whole year so on today's episode we're going to end the season finale because uh at the time of this recording uh, the holidays are here and the year is almost over. So we're going to talk about what the good and the bad of 2020 and what we want to see out of 2021 on the other side of the break. Stay tuned. Vaccines are here. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But don't get sloppy. We still have to practice social distancing, play safe, and be smart. The virus is still here, and only high-risk workers will receive the first batch of vaccines. And you have to take two doses to get the full effect, so supply is limited. And remember, we're all in this together, and it shows when we stand hand in hand, making our dreams come true. Hey, hey, and welcome back, guys. Uh, this is our show season finale, season two season finale. Once again, I'm joined by Brandon and Lee. I mean, this has been a crazy year. Uh, 2020, man, I think that it's going to be uh, it's going to be in the history books, but kids don't really read books anymore. So it'll be online for a long time. Uh, that's a, that's a, a punch at little kids that don't read books anymore. They'll have I mean, this podcast to kids- listen to. They'll, they'll be listening to yeah, straight podcasts. up. Yeah, 
Because I mean, like, I mean, because you remember having those textbooks and you can look at the answers in the back of the book. Now you can go on YouTube and find anything you right. want to know. Like, you could do I mean, that. It's crazy. I did that. It's crazy. Lot. And that's one of the things that kids had to get used to this year was doing school online. And even some kids in the beginning of uh, the coronavirus actually graduating online. So, I mean, that's one thing that's kind of, I guess, bad that happened this year. And we're going to talk about, let's get the bad stuff out the way first. Like, I mean, this has been a crazy year. Uh, so let's just talk about kind of going month to month to kind of give a timeline of the bad stuff that happened in 2020. So uh, just going back, man, like, you know, this year started off uh, with those Australian bushfires. You remember, like, like Australia was going crazy with fires. Y'all remember that, right. the, uh, the fires in Australia? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, we, we were talking about this earlier off mic, and when you when you reminded me of that, I'm like, that was this year? That was this because year. Because it, it, it literally feels like something that happened one or two years ago. But no, that that's how that's man. What a way to cap off the year, right? Yeah, start and, off the and, year, right? and it, yeah, and to start off the year. But that actually was going from December, which is in the winter time, into January. So yep. it's like, man, like just imagine. I mean, because you know, cold air makes things dry. So it's kind of like, wow, that's just and that man. It almost I think killed like almost 34, 34 people over like 47 million acres of uh, Australia damaged by wildfires. And then I just remember seeing like burnt up koala bears. And, right. And it's just like, and like, I remember what's the guy from, um, was that Pierce Broadman? I think I, one of those people from down under uh, was big on donating money uh, to Australia. Uh, so that was kind of crazy. And I think that uh, kind of just um, going on staying in January about what bad, I mean, it's not really bad, but um, I mean, 2020 was historic. And keeping it in January, uh, Prince Harry and uh, Meghan Markle say, you know what, we're going to quit the royal, you know, just, just quit the royal family. And I think the big part about that, and I mean, we don't know for sure why they quit. Uh, they wanted their own independence. And I think it's because, you know, Meghan Markle was going through a lot of racism uh, within the royal family did y'all hear about that story too i did hear she was facing a lot of pushback mm -hmm. over there mm -hmm. and I, I i think that with her she wanted to make some changes and i think and of course we all know that people hate change i think it was also she wanted uh to continue to do some things that she already had planned and they was like well you can't do that anymore and she was you know to him, he was like, well, this is one reason why I love her. So now you got that scale. Uh, so I don't know. I did read a little bit of that, believe it or not. Me yeah. Read. And I think she just, you know, just you know, it's kind of like, man, who does she think she is? Come out here and think that, you know, she can run our royal family, do what she wants. On top of the what could have been racism, which, you know, there was some reports uh, out there now speaking of reports man i think the biggest one that caps off 2020 uh what happened to be that the who the world health organization announced that in january night the first case of coronavirus happened in wuhan china and i mean do we even need to talk about coronavirus right now <laughs> no i'm quite sure we're gonna have plenty of opportunities I was about to say, we've talked about it plenty, and I'm sure it's <laughs> not going away anytime soon. <laughs> but now, like, but like, let me let me just ask y'all. I mean, like, did y'all really take it that serious in January or what? I mean, like, not did you remotely. Do you remember remember hearing about it at all or what? I remember. It. Yeah, yeah, because I was still at Planet Fitness then, so that was one of the things that I was like talking to the manager, I was like, mm, you might want to think about this. What are we doing? And he was like, "Is nothing's going to happen. He, he was completely like, we're going to be fine. You know, I was like, okay. But l literally probably a week later, you know, that's when the shutdown. So early January, I don't think it was that serious uh i mean i remember like working in the media when the zika virus was a huge deal and i feel like around that time it was getting kind of blown up out of proportion because it was it was still contained to so many smaller areas 
And that's, that's what I assumed was happening with COVID. But then, you know, it surpassed everyone's expectations. And then it came to our shores and then the lockdown started and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, this is, this is a legit thing. This isn't, this isn't something we can just blow off. Yeah. And uh, it, I mean, even right now, like I, said, I don't really want to stay on the subject right. uh, too much because I mean, it, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a lot right now. It's a lot. And, you know, you don't want to just hear about the same thing. So many people uh, are going through this, you know, I mean, uh, as of right now, as we're recording this episode, I mean, uh, in the world, uh, there's been, I mean, over 67 million cases and over 1.5 uh, million deaths. Uh, so, I mean, it's right now, you know, scientists are trying to work on this. I mean, uh, at this time, yeah, at this time, there have been, uh, I think, some vaccines out and people, that's a problem in itself because people are skeptical on taking the vaccine. And, you know, do y'all blame them? Or, I mean, how do you feel about the whole vaccine thing? With the percentages that they have, it sounds good. The issue is right now, it hasn't been long enough to see where the drawbacks come from. And that's where people are kind of still skeptical. Um, even with the vaccine, it's still a, a, a two-parter too. You got to take it once and then three months, you got to take the other half of it. So there's a lot that's still in the works that's still being, that can still go wrong, you know, we we do have these uh, vaccines that's currently in the works, trying to get approved, trying to get pushed. Um, but there's still a lot of research that still has to be done for them. So I can understand. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I mean, I'm hopeful about everything uh, because of what Brandon was saying. Because, uh, well, I take that back. Our country is so divided about everything. Like, it doesn't matter how minuscule the thing is everyone has an opinion on it mm. and and facts just don't really matter as much anymore sad to say um and but i mean the thing about vaccines too is yeah there's there's a risk involved because any new product whether it be ve- uh medicine food whatever there's a little bit of risk there because you have to do massive testing over so many variables of people that you don't know what side effects are going to occur or what reaction may happen in someone because of one ingredient. And that's over the next year. That's just what we're going to have to deal with. Yeah. And the availability for everybody, is not even going to be there. So, I mean, it's just. Exactly. It's a, it's an ordeal. And it honestly, since I've been alive, I mean, I, I've never seen anything like, I like this. I mean, I thought that I think the, the craziest thing I've seen like this was 9-11 and uh, seeing that live, you know, and uh, I see the second plane live. That's probably the craziest thing I've seen. And um, but now to see this, and then the fact that people think it's fake, I'm like, really? <laughs> That's the funny part about it. It's like people think it's fake, and you know, uh, personal. Yeah, personally, I've lost two family members to it, uh, to COVID, and you know, and it, it sucked. That's probably one of the the downer things. Like you know, at least my mental. That's kind of been bothering me all year this year. So. I mean, you know, as Brandon eloquently says on our, on our PSAs, wear a damn mask. And so do it, people. Not because of me, not because of Brandon, because you're saving somebody else, potentially yourself. Uh, so that's something bad that happened this year that's kind of been like the focal point of 2020. 2020 COVID. 2020 COVID. Uh, I think... What really got me, I think, to me, honestly, you heard about COVID in January. It wasn't that big of an issue at all for us. But I think the year really kick-started uh, on January 26th uh, when a uh, in Calabasas, California, uh, Los Angeles Laker, great Kobe Bryant, and his daughter Giovanna, uh, and seven others crashed. And I just remember going, I had my, we had like a guy's weekend with my friends, uh, CJ and, uh, and my friends and a uh, friend of the show. And we, I just remember driving to go eat. And then my sister called me and says, Hey, you know, uh, Hey, are you okay? I'm like, what do you mean? Did you see what happened? I'm like, what? Kobe Bryant died. I was like, 
get out of here. You're lying. And then, <laughs> and then like, um, and then like, and then uh, I had to like, you know, don't do this people, but I was texting the driver and I'm like, looking at my phone, I'm like, this can't be real. And then it was real. And then like to figure out what happened, like, you know, maybe like a murder or something like that. that's what you're thinking. And then like, you know, you hear how it happened. And then we went to the shopping center in Dallas and this is before Corona. We had the lockdowns and everything. And I just remember being in this big shopping center and just to see a sea of people glued to their phones because it just happened. And like, and I just remember it being a gray day and it just didn't sit right that Kobe Bryant died, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I, I gotta admit, uh, it, it didn't really hit me as hard as a lot of probably like over 60% of, uh, the world. Um, because I'm not really big on basketball, but knowing him as the entrepreneur, the entrepreneur side of him, um, I understood the loss that we've, um, just the loss that we, we, what we lost that day, I should say, um, which I, I totally understood. And I felt like some people, uh, didn't really get it's either you you felt it on that side the entrepreneur side and what he was starting to do the next phase of his life or it's because of what he did on the court so for me that was the impact that you know he had on he had on me and what I felt uh, that day that night uh yeah like like Brandon I don't really follow sports at all but I mean the day it happened that was that was all that was on my social media feed was just, you know, basically the world collectively mourning this person. And that just shows what an impact he had on the world. And I have nothing but respect for, you know, that legacy. And I think to me that that, 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 that would probably stand out. I mean, besides coronavirus, but I think that's enough because honestly, I feel like when that happened and it's not that he died, it's how he died with his daughter and yeah i think it's what got a lot of people and it wasn't like a slow death it was like you know falling you know helicopter and i think that's really what got a lot of people how it happened and his daughter was 13 and he has a family of i think four you know uh, three kids now like without a dad a dad and a wife without a, a husband i think that's just kind of how it hurts and just to see the world mourn together and i think that i think that just kind of transitioning and how the world mourns together uh, we'll fast forward to like, you know, just go ahead and fast forward, uh, kind of like in the March and uh, April areas to where uh, we have the police involved killings of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor, and uh, so many more people that died. But it was definitely George Floyd that sparked the world. And, and a lot, like you know, y'all said, we had a lot of division this year. But I think that uh, I tell this to a lot of people, it's, you know, because this has been a very political year, very political. I right. think that it was, it was crazy that we saw more unity in the world on the streets protesting for a, a black man being killed by cops because the world protested and not just in America. Uh, and, you know, we fast forward to like April or May, uh, but this is when COVID is ramping up and people are on lockdown but people flood the streets with masks, the majority of with masks, uh, to flood the streets and say, hey, you know what? This is wrong. And I think just to see like Paris and, you know, uh, Paris and, uh, um, and England and all these other places protesting because of what happened to George Floyd. I mean, do y'all remember seeing all that stuff? Like uh, other places? I mean, we did a shows about this, though. We did, and... I think uh, 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 the reason why that this, well, first of all, there's so many reasons why that was a, a, a huge spark, but with everybody being quarantined, I don't know about you, but I'll use ex my, my experience at Walmart as an example, just working without music and just working in silence, just being in a area where nothing is happening. You think about a lot of stuff that you normally wouldn't think about. So I think with everybody being quarantined, you know, and then that happened, and then the amount of social media and, and, and just news hitting it, 
it made a lot of people sit down and think and just actually consider other sides that they wouldn't. And that was a huge reason why. That's one of the huge reasons why um, George Floyd and, and the protests became so huge this, this time around. Time around. Because it's always been happening. Yeah, always. I mean, and I think people are just more aware of these killings, you know. And I remember, I remember to this day, I got in trouble. Uh, Professor Conley, Dr. Conley, uh, she, I got wrote a paper on uh, NWA, and uh, and and because I mean, I, I'm a writer, I'm a journalist, so but and uh, the name of the song is called "F the Police," and so when you know when you're doing an essay, you can't cite. You can't. You have to cite the source. You can't like paraphrase. You have to give the actual quotation. So, and I was trying to tell the teacher that, hey, this is what they were saying on the streets. This is in the eighties. Like, this is what they're saying. This is kind of like foreshadowing what's in the streets. And, and I got a C on that paper because I use curse words in it. But I'm like, I can't. I'm sorry. This is me on my soapbox right now. But like, I did a paper on them because I mean, it was foreshadowing what's going on in the streets. A lot of people don't understand that. And so I think the protest with the killing of George Floyd uh, did spark, you know, hey, this is really going on. It just needs to stop. And, you know, that would actually catapult to so much. And it would actually make, you know, hold a platform for uh, Joe Biden to be uh, the president or the, well, eventually be the president, but be a nominee for president. It has a bunch of people actually say, hey, this is what we want to vote, uh, vote for and what we want. And, you know, that came about uh kind of just fast forwarding a little bit you know there's so much that happened this year but i think that we're trying to get the biggest ones uh that stood out and uh i think lee the one that really stood out the most to me and like when it comes to celebrities uh was probably was, outside of kobe bryant uh was black panther star uh chadwick boseman yeah that that one probably hit me the hardest too um like honestly uh, off the top of my head, I don't know if I've seen him in anything outside of Black Panther, but what was so especially tragic about his death was it just took away that potential of what we would see from this guy, because just that one performance alone sold me on this actor, and I'm like, I, I will watch you in anything. Put it in front of my eyes, please. But he's gone now, and I'll never get that chance, and that's, that's, the, that's the tragedy. Yeah, well, you well for one, that was to me that was my after Chadwick Boseman passed. That's when I finally realized how people felt about Kobe Bryant. Not really trying to compare. I'm just saying to me that was somebody I was following, watching closely, especially being in 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 the film industry. Uh, I was kind of a little bit, a little bit more tougher on his acting because me and you talked about this, Calvin. I was yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah. I want to see him uh, work on a role that isn't, that doesn't have so much material. I want to see him work a little bit more, uh, not discrediting how great he was at replicating the the uh, historical figures he did. But twenty one, I think it was twenty one bridges. Like that was the first one. I was like, he did an amazing job, and just the speeches he always had and the, the interviews I watched on him and how his mindset was. I think it was his mindset and the type of person he was and the things he really wanted to do, me knowing that will not happen anymore, that was, I just could not do anything the rest of the rest of the day because I, I had to process that. Yeah, and we actually have a uncut version of uh, unedited, un you know unrehearsed, uncensored uh, episode of a tribute to uh, Black Panther star Chadwick Boseman. Uh, we will release that sometime soon. Let know when, but we do have that. Uh, and like Kobe, Brandon, I think that it's how he died uh, that really kind of just kind of hurt more because he kept it a secret, you know, that he had cancer. And uh, I think that he held the secret and that he was young. He was 43 and he had cancer. And, you know, because a lot of people gave him a lot of flack about losing weight because he thought for a role or whatever, but didn't know that he was sick. So I think they kind of, 
they, and then him to finally die. Hey, I'm a, well, we were giving like you know, give him crap about his losing weight. And he died, you know. So it kind of made you feel bad too. I mean, and you know, me, you talk. I so said I was very critical of his acting, you know, because um, I mean, not and it's not just it's, it's really like a cultural thing. Nothing like against him. It's just a cultural thing, and because he was like the go-to black guy. Like, hey, uh, play Jackie Robinson. Hey, play James Brown. Hey, play Thurgood Marshall. Even though Thurgood Marshall was like ten shades lighter than him. You know, and it's, it's like, you know, and so that was the critical part me and Brandon will always talk about because I, I wanted like an actual martial artist as a Black Panther. But, you know, uh, that does not take away his great art. I mean, he was a true art to acting. And just to hear how he gave back to other uh, people of color who do wanted to act the way that Denzel Washington gave back and the way Felicia Rashad gave back, that really stood out to me because, I mean, if you don't take anything from our show, man, always pay it for it. Always pay it for it. Um, so we lost some more figures this year. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, she died this year. Uh, very phenomenal uh, uh, Supreme Court justice, you know, uh, Jewish lady who was just fierce, you know, powerful and fierce and uh, lost her. And there, she made one wish and she didn't get that wish uh, before she died. And don't want to talk about that too much, but uh Politics played a big deal this year. Uh, it just divided us. And I don't know what it was. And that was like just, uh, I don't know. I just never seen this much division uh, in my life, Lee. I mean, have you seen anything like this? But do you think, have you ever seen anything this political this year or what? Uh, honestly, I, I think maybe it's it's always been there. It's just over the last four years, for some reason, a certain group of people have become emboldened and empowered and their voices are being heard way more than they were before. Because before we had this nice little thing called shame and it worked really well and it kept all like the racists and, and the other assorted bigots in check. But that shame has kind of disappeared. Uh, but my hope is that with the next year, maybe that shame can can grow again and they'll return to the shadows and we won't have to hear from them ever again. You know, this is why I like working with y'all because I'm trying so hard to be, be mutual. And you just, you just like to, you know what I'm trying to say. And you just go there, but I love it though, man. That's why I love working. with y'all. <laughs> cause, Cause we have a rule on the show and Lee knows the rule and Lee just loves tiptoeing it, but it is straight up. So <laughs> Uh, we're just, I mean, it's been a bad year, but you know, some great things have happened. Uh, Brandon, just tell us, like, I mean, what's some, I mean, just tell us something bad that happened to you to, to, to you this year that maybe that you just want to like just forget it. You know, what, what was your like, man? Forget twenty twenty moment. Oh man, you you know what? Why you had to pick me for this? Um, <laughs> as somebody that always try to look on the bright side. I honestly cannot think of one. I feel like I have had one, but it kind of isn't really toward 2020 because luckily, like I said, I've, I've, well, no, actually there is one thing and it has some to like, you know, Lee, you didn't, you didn't know cause I don't post things, but uh, you know, my grandfather died. Uh, I think, yeah, officially last month. Uh, so me and, you know, trying to be precautious and not try to be around family, I've always had that sense of I should, especially the last couple of years, you know, I should try to not to work so hard, work so much and try to spend time with family. I mean, that was one reason why I, be, I became, you know, um, entrepreneur and I went and became a, a freelancer so I started my own business but of course with wedding and stuff between that COVID and trying to keep my my distance from family members there was a lot of regret that I couldn't see him as much as I should have so that's probably the only thing this year for me okay well, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Like, you know, uh, our condolences to you and your family uh, on that. Um, Lee, what was your just 
just forget 2020 moment. Uh, yeah, let, let me say, Brandon, I'm sorry to hear about your grandfather as well. Uh, yeah, this, this is the first I heard of it, so I, I do apologize. I, uh, I should be a better friend. But <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've been lucky enough this year that I haven't, I mean, I've had a like a distant relative or two that I've, I've maybe spoken to twice pass away this year, but no one especially close. But that that's always a hard thing, especially if it is someone like a, a grandparent or a parent or whatever. You there's there's always going to be that guilt of oh I didn't spend enough time with them, and that you, you can't let it eat away at you. But for I mean in compare in comparison to to Brandon's mine is pretty dang trivial, but at the same time it it this happened to me probably right right at the midpoint of the year, so it's just you know the year in general was already kind of catching up with me uh and i was carrying i guess a lot on my shoulders without kind of realizing it it's you know all these little things that just add up uh one thing at a time and the i guess the straw that broke the camel's back was we had a really bad thunderstorm come through and uh lightning fried a good chunk of the electronics in my house including a playstation 4 and an xbox one which is like almost a thousand dollars to replace uh so I, i'm i'm currently xbox list because i'm i only was going to replace one console so in the year the playstation 5 come out i spent 300 dollars on a playstation 4 because i'm smart <laughs> <laughs> i like how you like look at the bright side of everything <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean that that was just like it was a tipping point for me, and I've like I've, I've my mental health is not great in particular, and this week this year has just kind of taken a toll on it. But that that moment in particular, I was just like in a depressive fugue state for like a month, and it's just it's you know over a f- video game, who cares? But for me, it just it hit me like that. Yeah. I think there's like more to it though. It's kind of like you know, it's just like you said, it's a tipping point, right? Uh, and it's kind of like, and I share those same sentiments with you too, because I mean, my uh, my uh, just 2020 moment. Ooh, I said a cuss word. Um, was I think was to have like three family members die back to back, two in one week, and uh, I think that just kind of culminated. I mean, I, I, I mean, in we us three. I mean, I don't know about Brandon, but I know us. I mean, Brandon, probably you too. But this year has been a mental, like this mental period, and I don't know. It, it, I, you you have to be strong to come out and say, I've dealt with depression this year. Uh, even you know, and I argue with the president. You know, depression is big this year. You know, uh, that has been an issue, especially you when know, we, I, me, you know. Uh, what they kind of really hit me hard was not going to Brandon's wedding uh, because I'm high risk and, you know, not knowing the, how dangerous COVID was. And, you know, and if you listen to our show, you know that I, I've almost passed away two years ago. And so uh, that mental aspect of not getting COVID being a bigger guy and, you know, not chancing it, that's the paranoia that I've been dealing with. And it's, it is not bad paranoia. It's just a, Hey, you're feeling guilty for being healthy and it's like you know you know you want to do the the things you used to do but you can't and you know you have to take a pause back and you know hopefully lord willingly things will be better tomorrow and so i think that as far as my mental side of it i've dealt with some 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 unexcusable regret i guess because uh, it's not, hey, you shouldn't be, you know, have a pity party, you know, that's life. But at the same time, it's kind of like, I can see, I can, I can, I can say, hey, you know, what? I'm depressed about this. And I can actually acknowledge it to where last year, I mean, I was just brushing it off. And Brandon, you know, like I was just, you know, last year was hell. And uh, so, I mean, it's kind of like it was bad, but I was able to like look into it and not be so. And, you know, luckily I have these two guys to, talk to outside of the show and vent to something I that has been uh definitely a blessing in the skies and so we're gonna kind of leave on that note 2020 was bad but there was some good in 2020 and we're gonna talk about that coming up next on the other side of the break 
Tired of the same old boring clothes? Want to support your favorite podcast but don't know how? Well, you're in luck. The Straight Up Show podcast store is finally here. In our Teespring shop, you can find all the merch that tells the world you're keeping it straight up. From t-shirts to masks to even leggings, our store has you covered. Just visit straightupshowpodcast.com and click that merchandise button. That's S-T-R, the number 8, upshowpodcast.com. Okay, so enough crying. We, we, we've been through some bad stuff. We cried. Uh, so no more. No more crying. We're going to have some positivity now. You know, now it's time to, like I say, pull up your big boy panties and, or my bad, big boy pants and, uh, I mean, I guess boy, boys don't wear pants. Well, I mean, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> it's like, but you get what I'm saying. So uh, I think that this should some, shed some positivity. I'm just giving y'all a rundown of some great stuff that happened. Uh, I guess, I guess worldwide. I mean, COVID did happen, but guess what? There was a grandma who was 103 years old, and she celebrated her 103rd birthday by not only beating COVID, but she celebrated by drinking a Bud Light. 103. Dang. Uh, I think I think that uh, somehow uh, what really was cool this year, which I never lived through, was driving movies uh, and driving concerts. I mean, I mean, Lee, I mean, Brandon, have y'all ever been to a drive-in movie or a uh, concert? Not a, no, not a drive-in, actually, no, no. Still haven't, still haven't. No, but thanks to this year, I kind of want to now. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, and so that's something that's new that, you know, because I used to watch Grease, I'm like, standing in a drive-in, standing in a fool. Sorry, my bad. I, I like Grease. Hey, I'm black and I like Grease. Not not the hair Grease, but you know, you know what I mean. The grease, grease, like the movie. I'm, I'm digging myself you. in a hole. I'm digging myself in a hole. I think it was also was pretty cool that, like, because of the George Floyd thing, a lot of people were more aware of uh, cultural diversity. Uh, not just, I mean, I mean, have y'all noticed that a lot of these commercials are being more diverse and they're having like uh, more people of the LGBT community represented. They're having more people of interracial couples represented, and like even big people are represented in a way. Have y'all, have y'all been noticing that at all, or? I have, for sure. Yeah, I, I literally, like, just today, I saw a Best Buy ad where uh, a girl was, it, it was like one of those, like, clay, stop motion, claymation, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer pastiches that they were trying to do. But it was about this girl trying to find the perfect gift for her girlfriend. And I kind of did a double take because it's still something I'm actually getting used to seeing. But it, it always brings me a it, it gives me a little smile whenever it happens. What what commercial was this? Oh, it was just like a generic Best Buy ad for electronics deals. Really? Huh. I kinda yeah. want to see that. And I think I think that what's cool what's cool to me is that they just throw it out there. They're not trying to like cause some commercials like, hey, we have an interracial couple, we have a gay person like no, it's like, oh just oh, okay, cool. And like to me, you know what? That's okay. I like it. Like I think what really made people mad when it first started happening was that Cheerios commercial and they had the, the interracial couple. I'm like, y'all get mad at Cheerios? It's Cheerios, you know what I mean? But I think what was really cool to me also was that Crayola, they had like a diverse skin color box for crayons. And I'm like, that was pretty cool. I mean, they were kind of, and so many companies were open about diversity. So that that really stood out to me. I mean, even with us, with this podcast, we're able to Zoom each other. And so people have been doing like Zoom movie nights, Zoom, like parties, Zoom, like Thanksgivings this year. I mean, I mean, outside of the show, have y'all been like, you know, utilizing Zoom or what? Mm, Of course, with my business meetings. um, But outside of that, no. Kenya, yes. She has. I mean, she's been to a virtual convention, which I still don't know how it works. I mean, you've you've been part of a virtual convention. I still don't know how it works, but I'm quite sure next year I'll be um, probably at one. And that was actually my uh, New Year's resolution was to, you know, because the, the podcast came about uh, some gentleman found my old reels on TV, on YouTube long ago, encouraged me to do uh, some work. Brandon got me an idea to do a podcast, et cetera. 
But one of the goals I had last year was to go to uh, NABJ, which is the National Association of Black uh, the Conference of Journalism. I probably said it wrong, but it's for Black journalists and Hispanic journalism. And it was kind of, I thought, hard. And But luckily, I was invited by my friend, an old coworker who's an uh, anchor. And that was phenomenal. We were able to, you know, showcase uh, straight up to other people at CNN, NFL, network and impress these other people so i mean that that really helped me out and zoom and you know social media online and stuff like that helped out with this i mean that was a good take thank you for reminding me of that, about that man i kind of didn't um didn't know about that <laughs> i forgot about that but yeah so i mean i actually fulfilled one of my uh news resolutions besides the regular lose weight one i actually did lose weight gained it back but i lost it uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. hey if you have a lot if you haven't gained any weight in covid something's wrong you know I don't, I don't think I've gained, well, I've been working, I started back working out, so in that way I've gained weight, but nah, I was still kind of losing weight during the year, working a lot, so. Yeah, I don't want to say about me, man, I'm, I mean, I'm not, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm mediocre, I still look good, ladies, I'm just saying, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I think it was really cool. Like, it's, you know, Brandon and I, and, and Lee, actually, yeah, we used to work for an ABC affiliate. So we used to see The Bachelor all the time. And, and for the first time ever this year, they had a Black Bachelor. That was big for me anyway. Sorry. Yeah, still. Um, still, sorry. Don't watch The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, there was a Black yeah, Bachelor? You, yeah, there was. When was this? I had to think about. Wait, that's a man. That's a ma bachelor's a male. That was a black yeah. bachelor. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was there some backlash against it too, or am I misremembering that? I'm pretty sure there was. I mean, with anything, I mean, they they got mad. At, they got mad at Cheerios. So I mean, there was some Cheerios. backlash with the Bachelorette, but. I'm not one of them. That might be what I'm thinking. Of. Yeah, it might be the bachelorette. You know, so I'm sorry, guys. I'm just, you know, I'm I'm, I'm reading off an article right now, so I'm cheating. No, uh, it might. I don't, I don't know the but the bachelorette. Not to get off sub, uh, subject, is because they basically announced her while the previous was still going. So it's kind of like actually, it was it, it was the bachelor. It was uh, after 40 seasons. Uh, the Bachelor and the Bachelor, ABC finally cast his first black male lead, Matt James. Mm. Mm -hmm. Did you say 40 seasons? Yeah, because you know they do it, TV seasons are like every six months, so just, you know, or every like three oh my weeks. God. Yeah, you know, TV seasons, you know how we work. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, that's been going, that show has been going on for, for 40 seasons. That's, yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's impressive. It's all mm. fake, but, you know, <laughs> speaking of fake, um, speaking of, speaking of fake, uh, fake news was a big trend this year, huh? Right? Uh, <laughs> fake news was a big trend this year, which really is my biggest pet peeve, uh, especially from working in news. So, but you know, we do have a new president. Uh, some people are not happy about it, some are. Uh, we've had record breaking numbers, uh, Joe Biden getting over 78 million votes, uh, cast for him almost 150 million people are uh, voted all together. So, I mean, but, you know, I'm kind of PO'd a little bit because, you know, we have the other primary uh, elections and state elections and no voter turnout at all. Right. Shreveport, Shreveport you disappoint me a little bit, but. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. It was horrible. Uh, but for the national elections, we had uh, record numbers. We And we also... Uh, had the oldest, well, come January 2020th, the oldest president in American history, the on the biggest election in American history, and we have the first ever Jamaican Indian woman of color and the first woman vice president. Lee, that's a mouthful. Man, what do you think about that? I mean, yeah, it's it's great uh, to to finally see some representation in the White House. Uh, God, what? Let's see. We we've had Obama. We've that that's that's been it, right? There hasn't been any like we haven't. Yeah, it, it's it's amazing. It's unprecedented. Um, and oh my God, it's this should have happened like twenty years ago at least. But I'm I'm glad it's finally happened. She's yeah. the first female vice president too. Yeah, the so first she made history. 
like this has been historic and like you know uh and we push voting a lot no matter who you vote for at all uh your vote is your vote but just make sure you heard make sure your voice uh is heard but this has been a record-breaking year and honestly and i i don't know if it's like so much negativity on tv or just in the world period but as of right now when the election came over with i don't really care about the winner is just it feels like a sigh of relief uh you know I'm not saying anything is wrong with the other administration it's just that you know i think the biggest thing that everybody wanted was that same hope of unity that was displayed on the streets for george floyd to also be represented in the white house and i think that's what america was hoping for and looking for and 78 million people uh, made their voices heard. And so uh, with that being said, we do have a new president. Uh, and so we have to hold him accountable for the same things we held the pre- the current and previous president uh, accountable for. So uh, that was probably the highlight of great news. So let's talk about some feel good uh, guys. Um, Lee, let's start with you this time. Uh, what was your feel good moment of 2020? Uh, probably getting a project done. Uh, that's this year in particular has been kind of rough for me. Um, I mean, I mentioned mental health wise and, and in turn, like productivity wise, uh, just, you know, making myself, Hey, do this task has, has, you know, been tough. Um, but like, I, I set my mind to like, Hey, there's this video thing I want to produce. And it, it took me a while, but I was able to get it out there. And, you know, it's, this year has been an L for a lot of us. So I think we should just, you know, count the, sm- the small victories and that that one, it, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's small in the grand scheme of things, but for me at the time, it was very big and still is right now. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, man, just, I, I, I like talking to you, man, because you make things seem more better. And cause like, yeah, I think you hit the, the nail on the uh, spot. Uh, just, taking small victories. And I think that that's what, I mean, me personally, just not, and that's not just for 2020, that's in life, period. Small victories can lead to bigger rewards. And so uh, thanks, Lan, for telling me that. That kind of get, puts me in high spirits to hear that. Uh, Brandon, what, what's your feel? Well, I, I've already know this already, but uh, what's your feel good of 2020? I'm curious to see, I'm curious to see what, you, what, you, uh, what, what you think it is. But um, I mean, if your wife listening, you, she you might want to say, "Well, I think you should." That's say what it. I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like how much you're hesitating there. For her, it's and and me and her uh, is is that that wedding is over with, so I don't have to pay. F- we don't. I don't have to worry about that, and I can slow down again. The real feel good <laughs> was getting that stimulus check and paying off a huge bill. So, at least I said both of them. (laughs) I'm going to retract my statement and uh, go with Brandon's because I forgot about the stimulus check. And that's how I paid for that PS4 I had to replace. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay, um, that was emergency use only, guys. You were not supposed to use your stimulus checks for paying off cars. It was for emergency. You know what? I can't deal with this. You know, I, don't no know I, well, because, I mean, that was, hey, that's a big bill I was paying every yeah. month that now during this, you know, I don't have, I ain't have, have it coming out of my, my bank account anymore. Do this. Yeah. I mean, it was a former government system. A lot of people didn't need it. Some people didn't need it. They, 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 they're like, what, $3 million, $30 million that was un, unaccounted for? So, I mean, like, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, hopefully they find that money. It's a ton of money to be, you know, I mean, I can only imagine how, I hope this next administration, like, you know, they, they rebound with this uh, this economy because it is it, it has been crazy this year. Um, so, you know, they used the, you know, that, that stimulus check did help out. I mean, I was trying so hard not to spend it, but I mean, we're human. So, um, and it did help me out too, but I hope, hopefully, you know, Hey, Biden, if you're hearing me, my brother got student loans. So, um, yeah. 
for saying. Um, I would say my feel good moment of the year was honestly creating this podcast and, uh, you know, getting some leadership from Brandon to see how it, it how it's done and take it and try to like, you know, build off of it and be, I think the biggest thing with our show previously is not being consistent and we were able to be consistent with this. I mean, we're ending, this is our season two finale. Uh, I mean, and we have a lot more in the tank right now because I mean, we can just do more shows because we've recorded so much and we've had small goals and then we've, like I said, like Lisa had small victories. Uh, but aside of the show, I think that um, my biggest feel good was actually finally, fi- I didn't think it would come so hard, uh, but finally have some isolation to myself, which I didn't have for 10 years. And, you know, oh, Brandon knows, Brandon knows my personal story, Lee does too. So, uh, to have my personal isolation. And uh, so that kind of has happened this year. It made me feel good. But at the same time, like, dang, man, like, I think you're going to take away. Like, I can't go go karting or go to, you know, what I want to. Or, you know, I had a free trip to Vegas for Christmas and I couldn't go to it. And it's like, man, and I mean, I can go to it, but you know, I'm high risk too. So, who uh, chose to going to Vegas? Didn't go. Oh yeah, two chance. Well, <laughs> the first time that wasn't me. I was on y'all. Second yeah. time, COVID happened, and so um, COVID, you know, COVID uh, was, you know, has played a damper. But COVID has brought some uh, positivity. I'm glad that you know I was able to got a chance to fellowship with you guys. It's been a great 2020. Like I said, Lee, you know, I love you, Brandon. Love you, Lee. Uh, it has been a great year, you know, and so. We're going to talk about what we want next year to look like. 2020. Hmm. Y'all think about this. Stay tuned. Coming up next. What's up, everybody? Brandon here with Straight Up. We want you to be mindful of the importance of wearing a mask out in public. We know it's uncomfortable, but believe it or not, you are saving a life. This virus has hit our community hard and scientists are still looking for a vaccine. So wash your hands, practice social distancing, and most importantly, wear a damn mask. Hey everybody, Lee here. And guess what? The reviews are in and the Straight Up Show podcast is a hit. Don't believe me? Well, listen to what one of our guest panelists, Dr. Monique Thompson, has to say. Listen, y'all listen in to Straight Up and support this podcast because I listened in before I came on the show. I liked what I heard. They're really focusing on keeping things real and being real with you. And I like that approach. So you guys support this podcast. So if you want to listen, donate to the show, have a subject idea, or even want to be a guest, just contact us at straightupshow at gmail.com. That's straightupshow at gmail.com. All right, so we had the good, we had the bad, and now let's talk about the things we want to see in 2021. You know, there's a lot to look forward to. Uh, hopefully COVID, you know, there's a vaccine right now, 95% uh, effective by Pfizer. Uh, hopefully by the time this recording comes out, maybe there can be more and uh, more people can be, can be vaccinated. But that's one thing to look forward to in 2021. Um, a lot of stuff going on next year that we should happen. I know that uh, Lee, a lot of Disney movies and TV shows are, are coming out. But uh, what's what's something that maybe you are looking forward to in 2021, whether it be just uh, worldly, nationally, or just personally? I mean, yeah, you, you kind of tugged at my pop culture heartstrings there for a minute. I mean, we've got all the uh, – God, like, just, what, this past week, uh, Disney announced a whole mess of Star Wars and Marvel th- movies and TV shows coming this upcoming year. Uh, I know this isn't like an important thing, but you know, it's, it's one of those things that kind of gives me hope and kind of keeps me, me chugging along. Um, and, and this year, you know, uh, like Hollywood took a big hit because, you know, they had to stop production of a lot of things. And every day I'm scrolling through my newsfeed and I'm saying, oh yeah, this, this show you like, uh, they've started production back up again and I'll check it again the next day. And, oh, nope, they've shut down because they had a COVID scare. Um, so that was another thing you touched on is the vaccine that, you know, 
we'll, we'll get, I think we'll have a little more stability coming our way. And that's, that's, that's the main thing I'm really looking forward to is some freaking stability. Uh, my day job has been on lockdown since March and I've been working from home this whole time. And it'll be nice to be able to go back to a place that has like stable internet and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the main thing I'm looking forward to is like a, just a, a small hint of normalcy again. <laughs> And hey, I'll take that hint. Just the hint of normalcy for 2021. Just the whole 2020 is the hint of normalcy. Because I mean, I'm the same way with you. I haven't been to my my real job in since March 13th, and then it's like what two months away. Dang man, it's, it'll be a year. Yeah. And I have like 80 plus pounds to thank for it. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> and that's actually one of my goals. Is to, you know, of course, everybody's New Year's resolution is to lose weight, but uh, you know it's going to be a lot to just to get back to normalcy. And uh, Brandon, what's something that maybe you might, you're looking forward to you think are. Well, for me, uh, hopefully I can tackle some of the new year's resolutions that I could not do this year um, because of COVID and of course the wedding, but next year, hoping to finally take out um, all that debt I have and finally uh, just Finish a film, you know, work on a short film and get it done. Of course, we also plan on moving as well. So there's that to get in the way of it, of things. But, hey, I knocked out a lot of stuff this year with all the mess going on. So uh, for me, that's the big thing. Yeah. And that's uh, good to hear. You know, big congratulations to Brandon. Like I said, we, he got married this year. Uh, beautiful life. Uh, I think the one thing I'm looking forward to is that I actually uh, fulfilled one of my New Year's resolutions, which is probably rare for me. Uh, I stopped eating at McDonald's. That's a good thing because they suck. Uh, no offense to McDonald's, but uh, I didn't. I've never stepped foot in McDonald's this whole year, which I'm really proud of. And um, and that's that's a lie. I lie to you. And that's, I do go to McDonald's to get the free water during the summertime. So <laughs> I, I, that's a lie. I've done that, but no. Uh, I think that I want to build on um, just, you know, getting back to myself. Because, I mean, two years ago, even last year was horrible, uh, 2018, 19. And, you know, just to have some sense of normalcy mentally uh, outside of COVID (laughs) and the loneliness, that's a big win for me. So I want to build off of that. And, you know, you know, with the help of Brandon and Lee, you know, we've, we've been able to make this podcast. And, you know, we started from the bottom up and I was just talking to Leah about how, you know, we started from just, you know, make with some scratchy mics in the beginning to like doing the second season to like getting merchandise and to a website. So, I mean, Lee, you know, I definitely want to build off of that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm super looking forward to seeing, seeing where we can take this thing. Yeah. And like I said, man, big thanks to Brandon, too, for, you know, putting the idea out there and like getting us started, man. Really appreciate you. Oh yeah. You, I mean, you did most of the heavy work. I mean, season two was phenomenal. Can't wait to see what happens in season three going straight into 2021. Yeah. And um, we want to make sure that you all are uplifted next year. You know, it's this year has been a struggle. It, It has been a struggle, struggle. And, uh, I know a lot of athletes are mad because or people who are fans of sports are mad because the they the athletes have not had a chance to train and he said now you're gonna have football in February and maybe in March because that's when most athletes do their training you know in basketball the seasons are starting in December and it's just it's it, this whole COVID impact has dominated the topic of 2021 and you know we lost people you know, and people have lost their jobs, their homes. And so I hope 2020 uh, is better for us as not only as a nation, but uh, in the world, because it's impacted the world. And with the nation involved, we have an opportunity to hold our new politicians, especially the president and vice president, accountable for getting everything back to stability. And, you know, I'm kind of hesitant on the vaccine, you know, and how it's been politicized. And so some people are scared to take it. Um, you know, so that's one thing I want to really have people to encourage, look forward to that, you know, our government won't fail us this year and or next year. And 
that we can actually get the help to those who need it and, you know, give them a glimmer of hope, just something, you know, and, you know, maybe a stimulus check too. <clears throat> Lee or Brandon wouldn't help, you know? Yeah. I'd love that. Are, are you asking us for the stimulus check? I mean, I'm not asking you, but I'm just saying like, just throw some positivity <laughs> in the air <laughs> that we'll get in a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hey man, I pay my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that, that's going to be crazy paying your taxes this year. That's going to be something to look forward to. I yeah. feel sorry for people who have to do their taxes because this is going to be an ordeal. Uh, but no, we really hope that they the help. Oh God, don't remind me. I know, right? Uh, I think anybody that has taxes should not owe anything this year or from last year. Um, <laughs> but uh, this for you people that got the stimulus check, you're going to have to pay that back just letting you know. So don't think that uh, it's just free money. Um, so, but no, seriously, we, I hope that those people who need the help uh, get the help they need, you know, just to see people who are struggling and like seeing stories about people who lost their homes and you know, I really hope and pray those people get the help they need and that us as a nation in the, in the world can actually pay it forward and give back to those people who need it. And that's the only thing, I, if, if anything, that would be my 2020, 20, uh, 2021 New Year's resolution is that I can see more people and actually enjoying these people and paying it forward and, you know, having a heart. And, and also just seeing those people who protested this year, you know, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, everybody on the street together. I hope that kind of unity, you know, progresses and not just a formality. You know, if that makes sense, Lee or Brandon, like just, I want to see it continue. People just to continue to take care of their fellow man and just speak up against injustices and wrongdoings. I definitely want to see more of it. Um, there's going to be, I think, let's hope a lot of this wasn't because of people locked in and, you know, using a lot of this, you know, the protesting as a way to get out and them, you know, hopefully there's not a lot of people reverting back to the bad habits. I should say, um, I agree. I definitely want to see uh, movements continue us to continue going forward. And this wasn't just a phase. I want to see this continue. Um, so I definitely, definitely agree. Yeah, I, I don't think the movement is going anywhere. Uh, if anything, it's it's only going to pick up steam. I mean, as as long as injustice continues in this world, I mean, people are going to have to rise up to fight it. Yeah, and big kudos to Joe Biden for like diversifying his cabinet. You know, that's to me that deserves a big head off. You know, I don't know what they're going to do, but just to put those people in an office that can just you know, you know, help those who don't think that they can make a difference, make a difference. And I think that that's very commendable for him uh, just to take the leverage to, hey, you know what, I'm president, but now I'm going to pick my cabinet and make it as diverse and as equal as you see people of uh, Arabic, uh, of the LGBT community, black community, white community, Asian community, like in his cabinet. And to me, that's very impressive. So that's something to look forward to. But I mean, I'm going to go around the table right quick and just ask Brandon and Lee. I know, I know what y'all told me what y'all expect, but uh, what's your 2021 New Year's resolution? Brandon, I'm going to ask you first. Uh, to make a, not a full feature again, I'm not doing that again, but a, a, a short film that I actually like, a short film that I actually really like. That's going to be my big 2021 resolution all right lee um let's see off the top of my head i'm gonna actually bite the bullet on that uh tv pilot i've been mulling over in my head for like five years now <laughs> and i find it funny that uh that uh that all of us are something about media because my new year's resolution is to uh, take my experience that I had at the uh, NABJ and pray that I can land a TV on air job. So that's my New Year's resolution. I mean, I made the step to go to the conference and then I hope that I can go ahead and go ahead and go on, my, on air next year, hopefully with uh, COVID being, you know, and, and TV production going back to flourishing. So 
Uh, that's my New Year's resolution. So we hope that all you out there uh, have some amazing and incredible New Year's resolution and you don't go past the first month of doing it. Because <laughs> that's kind of how most people are. <laughs> uh, I know myself included because the losing weight thing happened like not even a whole hour. Until, you know, so. Uh, <laughs> but no, just kidding. But, you know, this has been a phenomenal year. Uh, one to remember and, you know, we don't want y'all to leave thinking that 2020 was the worst year ever. Uh, it's definitely a, a year to remember, but we have our lives, you know, you know, at the Americans listen to this. We are part of one of the greatest nations in the world. And I can't uh, be more proud to be in America. It's not perfect, but, you know, we're here. Uh, but definitely condolences to those across the world who are listening right now who have lost their homes and jobs to this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, your hearts are, or our hearts and prayers are with you and your family. Uh, but we, we're going to make sure that you all are taken care of, uh, put positivity out there in the world. And don't, don't think that you're alone with this because we all go through it. We all go through the struggle, uh, the mental aspect, everything we we're, we're there for you. So, and that's what we have this show for to go ahead and tell you about, uh, our personal experiences and not have any filter and just be as honest and open as we can. And that's why we want you to join the conversation and come back next season because, guys, this is the season finale of the Straight Up Show podcast season two. Uh, so, guys, hey, big thanks to Brandon, Lee, uh, Christina. Big thanks to Dasmin and CJ, who were uh, regulars on the show this season. But we're coming back. Uh, we're going back for a little, take a little break right quick. And uh, maybe, like, maybe a monthly, maybe. I don't know. But we're coming. We're going to take a little break, spend the holidays with our family and friends, and regroup and try to give you more straight up content that you like. Uh, that's it for season two. Uh, you guys can join the conversation by going to our website www.straightupshowpodcast.com. That's S T R the number eight U P showpodcast.com there you can look at old episodes listen to our old episodes tv episodes too that you know started on tv you can go uh, there look at our episodes you can buy our merchandise big thanks to those who actually bought our merchandise this season that's kind of crazy to leave the uh the straight up vote one was the number one seller this year. I mean, it was a pretty big vote. <laughs> <laughs> Real big vote. And I think that, you know, we were able to help uh, get the voice out about voting, the importance of voting. So uh, make sure you guys can look at all our merchandise. And, and if you don't like our merchandise or our show, uh, Lee, there's an email that people can go if they don't like our show. And what is it? Uh, yes, Calvin, that email is I don't care at gmail.com. That's I don't care at gmail.com. Those shirts are exclusive at Straight Up Show Podcast. Until then, uh, make sure you guys always keep it real. But the most important thing is you got to be straight up. Straight up. See you guys next season. Brandon here. The crew and I just want to say thank you. 2020 may have been a rough year, but you, our listeners, have really helped us keep straight up going. Season 2 was a success, and we have a lot of amazing guests to thank for that. We have you to thank for that. Your support means a lot to us. So continuing with a Season 3 was a no-brainer. While you wait for Season 3, continue to enjoy this holiday season. Spend time with your family and catch up on episodes you may have missed. Above all, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next season.